Hello everyone and welcome back to another CSR Racing 2 season video. The series where I bring you guys up to speed with what you can expect for the coming 2 weeks of season 98 as we're inching closer and closer to the 100. For today I will tell some more about the new season prize car which is a sweet Lambo. The prestige car which is one of the best cars to use in the Tempest series and give a word on the best of British finale which started today with some warnings up ahead that you should know before you start running it. Also for this season there are two other videos that you can expect. One is the best of British finale most likely tomorrow evening with all the hardest times etc. And another season max video more down the line where I'll go in depth on all the important cars, sharing facts, details and AR shots to make the car fanatic in you come out. But back to today's video, closing off season 97 with a great throwback Thursday where the top 3 is back to the top 3 cheaters from back in the day. This really brings up some good memories. Anyways, the claiming of the invisible milestone car, the Infinity Project Black S. A hybrid powered Q50 with Formula 1 running through its veins. Despite it being a new manufacturer, it's a great addition to everyone's collection, as this is one of those cars that down the line will be important once it becomes a prestige car. And it will without a doubt. But this car is in its sense quite unique. It has a great contrast of the matte satin black with the yellow lines in there, but the carbon accents just finish it off. In real life this is the only color which exists, as it's named Project Black S after all. But it seems Natural Motion has come to an agreement with some other colors to be available which is quite interesting. I'd say for now save it somewhere and be ready when it comes around again. And performance wise it's already tested to be a very good tier 4 car, cementing itself perhaps even in the top 3 fastest pullable tier 4 cars. Season price car for number 98, an Italian Bull, the 2020 Lamborghini Huracan Evo Spider. A car which was released last year at the Geneva Motor Show but made its digital debut in Asphalt 9, most likely establishing an embargo that ended recently. It's nice to see such a car being added and this is perfect for newer players, simply because of how easy the car will be to upgrade as Lambo parts are rather common, although it does not share stage 6 parts with any other Huracan variant. But then for the veteran players, it's also a great car because it's a real collector's item. It will now be the 5th Huracan variant in game, meaning we're inching closer and closer to fill up a full Huracan variant garage. And maybe the 6th one might come sooner than you think, as a couple of months ago this picture was released. The Huracan Silhouette Liberty Walk, which also has the CSR2 logo on the front bumper. As for the color, the season price pack comes in this Verde Silvans, which will only be limited to the top 10 crews. And us milestone hunters will get the Giallo Inti with the black log forged 20 inch rims with the black center lock bolt, which will definitely stand out in your Lambo garage. I'm glad to see a yellow Lambo coming up to the scene. And if you're not happy with this pack and wondering what else might be available in the future, I'd suggest to you to head out to the Lamborghini configurator. There you might see some colors that might spark up some interest and you might expect in game at some point that it might become pullable. For example this Rosso Efesto with the red bolt is gonna look so damn good in game. Performance wise however it seems to be kind of disappointing. I was expecting it to be slightly faster than the Huracan Performante and to be more in the range of the Pista Spider. But now it sits more in the Liberty Walk Huracan range. Maybe the Dino could be beaten but I haven't had any time to do any test runs yet. But for now it's a little bit disappointing. Onto the prestige car, the 2017 Nissan GTR Nismo running the N Attack package, with the N in the name referring to the Nürburgring as it's the package used on the 2015 model that set a time of 7 minutes and 8.7 seconds back in 2013. And to put that into perspective, back then the only production car faster than that was the Porsche 918 running the Visac package. Since then of course it lost some places, but it still sits comfortably in the top 15, which after 7 years is rather impressive. But funnily enough, finding this package on the 2017 model is quite hard. I already made a video on this car back from my season video in season 69, which was just over a year ago. And back then there were only 4 or 5 colors available, but now it seems like there is some more specs like this blue one that give this car a slightly different dimension I would say. Maybe tomorrow when the drop rate starts some more specs will surface. In terms of performance, 
This is the car you want to run in Tempest against Donna. It can beat the Speed Trap, the Sprint Race and the Final Time, requiring only one or two Stage 6 parts. Alongside that all Fusion parts installed, but Nissan Fusion parts are rather common, so it's not too hard to upgrade. If you want to have a full rundown, I'd like to forward you to Max the Gamer. He has a video discussing the tunes for this car and the scope on how to beat Donna and how to get that sweet F50 in your garage. As how fast this car can go maxed out, right now is this the third fastest freely obtainable tier 4 car. Behind the Porsche Carrera 4S, Carriolet and the C8 Stingray, it's really a car worth getting, that's the message here. For the events for this season, I think we can already see on the map for this season what will be the most prominent, the in-game version of the Brexit, the finale for the best of British. Split up into two parts, the British Classics intro, which is not really related to the finale itself, but a nice way to get extra parts, and then the main course, the finale itself. An 80 races rundown where you will have to lock in 5 best of British cars to get a chance at winning the beautiful McLaren Speedtail, which is a 7.0 seconds car. I have to say though that I don't really get the point of this British Legends Cup as being part of the finale, as these two events are not linked in any way, unlike the prologues we had for each single part in the past. And this message on the British cars and the rare imports is also slightly confusing to me, as I can't seem to find these 200 silver keys crates and the rare import. But other than that, Yes, it's a finale and it's finally here. In terms of lock-in order, I haven't run the event yet, but I've heard that the third lock-in rewards 3 out of 4 stage 6 parts. But here I'm wondering what the thought process behind this was. Why 4 and not 6 in the first place? And why 3 of them to one car instead of spreading them? The most ideal situation would be that each lock-in would at least get one stage 6 part, right? As for difficulty, what I had so far is that the event is quite spicy, and that you will need at least 3 to 4 stage 6 parts, and each car roughly 85-90% to fused. Which again, for a finale in my opinion, is rather hard, definitely with a new manufacturer just like the TVR, the Noble, Ginetta and the Ultima. And that is just to unlock the speed tail, I'm curious to see how it will be after you unlock that one. What I do really like about the finale however is the crates. It seems as if they listened to the past complaints and they do reward now one free crate every 24 hours over a period of 12 days. Which means that you should get one loyalty for each car and statistically you should also obtain a second one along the way. But that one is not guaranteed. But even better, for the Ultima we see a crate that can be bought using bronze keys rather than real cash. But we also see the return of the cascade system. And before I hear people yelling at how this is a money grab and this isn't fair etc, keep in mind this is an additional system and not a replacing system. You are by no means forced to change your way of playing slash spending, they even made it easier for you that you can use bronze keys. If you're not familiar with this system, here you basically have to buy 5 times the first crate to unlock the dearer second crate, which will give you a guaranteed rare fusion part but can still give you uncommon. Then you have to buy 5 times the second crate to unlock the even dearer third crate, which will guarantee you epic fusion parts but can still give you uncommon parts. And then you have to open 5 times this third crate to unlock the final one, which is a paid crate, where you will get a guaranteed stage 6 part. But you're limited in the amount of times you can open this one. So if you want to get to the final paid stage 6 crate, you will have to put down 12,500 keys, not counting in the free ones, and you don't hit a single time loyalty so there is no guarantee you have a stage 6 part. And by that time, I will have invested my 9800 keys into hitting twice the loyalty on the first crate, guaranteeing myself at least 2 stage 6 parts. Though on the other hand I will have less epics along the way. It's up to you what you want to do. I just hope that this isn't going to be the case again, because no clue what triggered this completed crate. In general, more info on the finale in my finale video. A final thing that I would like to talk about is something that I don't usually do, but I would like to give a shout out to Master Yoda from Zombie Outcast, a player who had been playing since CSR1 and in early 2016 came to CSR2 and became a legend. He passed away last season age 70, and I might not have known him personally, but his crew, which almost became a family to him, did know him very well. A true CSR legend can be said, and it shows how much this game can have an impact on people's lives, young and old, and the families around them. He ran thousands of miles with his Romance Bentley, 
and will always stay in the hearts of many. My condolences to his family and crew, and like he would say, shut up and drive. Before I close off then, as I do have a reach over an audience, I would like to bring up the situation with the coronavirus. I'm not here to panic, but I'm here to remind you to make sure not only wash your hands regularly, but to sometimes also clean or disinfect your phones and tablets. We sometimes use these for hours when we're watching videos, playing games, reading articles, with our hands glued to them, and we forget that they might hold bacteria and other germs. So make sure to keep attention to that. Also follow up other advice given to you, the social distancing, the not shaking hands and such. Don't go out there buying 50 rolls of toilet paper. Keep calm, we're gonna get through this, but we have to work together on this to get through the storm. And I think everyone globally right now is affected with this matter in some way. So I would like to wish all of you and your families the best and that you all stay healthy. And with that I will end my video. If you enjoyed it, do not hesitate to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this. Let me know down below what your thoughts are about this season. My name is Miller, see you around and keep racing.